it's all about the future and the money, the draft picks, things of that nature. Because quite frankly, this roster sucks. It's just the reality of it. It's not a good roster. Well, There's no players you, there. Mm. I mean, think about it. They've, they've only got two or three players that could probably start for another team. Two to maybe three. But the offensive line is not good. The overall roster talent is not good. So you have two regimes. I, I just think that when you look at the Bears and, and this young man, they have failed him. This could be an ugly year for Chicago. I Nobody gave us a chance this year. We were a punchline to jokes all offseason long. Even our own fan base got in on it and spent the majority of the year laughing at the team's expense. We were ranked dead last in almost all of the power rankings. Everyone picked us to get the number one pick of the draft next year. Mike Martz said we had the worst offense he has seen since the 0-16 Detroit Lions. Nobody picked us to start the season off with a win against the 49ers. And then after losing three straight, nobody picked us to beat Bill Belichick on Monday Night Football either. Our rookie head coach just outcoached one of the greatest head coaches in NFL history with a young team and young quarterback on the road as big underdogs. This was the first time in Chicago Bears history that we won a game at Foxborough Stadium. It was our first win against the New England Patriots since the year 2000. It's been 22 years. It was our first road win at New England ever. Our first win is a road underdog of at least eight and a half points since 2015. And we gave the Patriots their second largest home loss under Bill Belichick against an NFC opponent ever. This is the win that some people are calling franchise altering. It was a statement game for Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus. The national media has referred to the 2022 Chicago Bears as a punchline all year long. Not one single member of the national media differed from the lazy narratives. To outsiders, the Chicago Bears were a mess. They traded their best player, Khalil Mack. They hired a GM and coach that casual fans had never heard of. No matter what Ryan Poles did this offseason, there was no changing that narrative as far as the national media was concerned. Once Poles added two defensive backs with his first two picks of the draft, the story was already written. The narrative was that the new GM doesn't believe in Justin Fields and he was doing nothing to help him. It was one of the laziest takes I've ever read in my entire life. Yet as the offseason progressed, that narrative just got louder and louder. Nearly every day, Bear fans would wake up to some new clown in the national media spouting off about how bad the Bears were. It happened all offseason. Mike Martz, Colin Cowherd, Dan Orvlosky, Louis Riddick, Bart Scott, Dominique Foxworth, Mike Lombardi, Kay Adams, Jeremy Layton, USA Today, ESPN, NFL Network, Mike Martz, Dan Orvlosky, David Kaplan. I could go on and on and on. Colin Cowherd was the one that said we should trade Roquan Smith and we will be the worst team in the league this year. He says we operate like a team from the 1950s and don't know how to work the salary cap. Hey Colin, wake up. This GM actually does understand how to build a roster and does understand the salary cap. In fact, he knows a lot more about it than Colin Cowherd does, which is why you shouldn't take anything that guy says seriously. Mike Martz says it's going to be a rough career for Justin Fields in Chicago. He said he's not very accurate, and this is the least talented offense since the 0-16 Detroit Lions and we are simply a bad football team. Before I get into it too much, I do want to say I respect Mike Martz. He was a brilliant offensive coach in the NFL for a long time. He created the greatest show on turf. However, it was a long time ago, and his comments about the Chicago Bears show how out of touch he is. Sometimes guys say things just to get the response. I honestly ignored both of these comments and wasn't going to talk about them at all. However, Mart's comments in particular have bothered a lot of fans. 
and I specifically had more than a few of you reach out and ask for my opinion on the topic over the last month or so. Shout out to Buck. People misunderstand what it means to understand football. And it's one of the main reasons why I see things most people don't see. You have to look at the entire picture. Mike Martz isn't an idiot. He knows offense. He doesn't, however, know anything about this year's Chicago Bears football team. He also failed miserably in his time in Chicago and was such an offensive genius that he couldn't figure out a way to use Greg Olson and had him traded. Mike Martz is off his rocker with these comments. Him and Don Burr are the only two people in the world who think this offense is as bad as the Detroit Lions. This game has passed him by. He has hard feelings for Chicago and decided to take a shot at us. Quite frankly, Mike Martz has never been a personnel guy, so his opinion on a team's personnel should not be taken seriously. He was just an absolute failure in Chicago and is just joining in with the other national media clowns who all expected us to be the worst team in football. Those guys didn't do the research. They aren't watching the tape on day three guys we drafted. They aren't even watching tape on the second rounders we drafted or Justin Fields. They didn't follow training camp and they aren't watching the preseason games either. The national media has proven over and over and over again that they are out of touch with any team that isn't in New York or has Tom Brady on the roster or is the Dallas Cowboys. They simply don't pay attention. The national broadcast guys can't tell Sean Desai and Ryan Poles apart, but some people take their evaluations of a roster seriously. Fantasy football has grown into a monster. It has brought millions and millions of fans into the sport, and now a lot of these guys will judge rosters based on fantasy football merit, especially when they talk about wide receiver one or wide receiver twos. The national media, for the most part, can only name one wide receiver on the Bears, Darnell Mooney. You have to follow a team closely to know all the other guys on the roster, especially this year. Guys like Dante Pettis, Equinemius St. Brown, Nikhil Harry, Ajay Sharp, and Valus Jones Jr. aren't big-time fantasy football players, so the national media just assumes they are garbage. Unfortunately, this is not how real life works. Most of the guys that make it to the NFL, especially that become first-round picks, have the talent. It takes more than just talent to last in the NFL. Scheme fit, work ethic, system, health status, coaches, and so many other factors come into play. Every guy I named from Pettis to Valus all have the potential to be really good players in the NFL. Chances are at least one of these guys is going to stick around and make a big impact. Will they all work out? No way. But the NFL is full of great stories underdogs, comeback stories, and second chances. Almost all these guys have the talent. It's about finding the right fit, and then they have to put their head down, get to work, buy into the coaching staff, and bust their ass until they see results on the field. For the people commenting that I'm just some guy and that you should listen to the stations like ESPN and Yahoo, I don't know how to tell you this, but those guys are almost never right about the Bears or predicting anything in the NFL. Have you guys ever taken a look at ESPN's power rankings before a season and then at the end of the year? They are awful. They had the Bengals ranked 29th last year, and they went to the Super Bowl. They had the Bears ranked four spots ahead of them. It's clear they have no idea what they are talking about. How about things Adam Schefter reported? Well, last year, he said multiple times to take it to the bank that five quarterbacks will go in the first seven picks. I went on record and said, I don't buy this. I think it'll be three. It ended up happening. Only three went in the first seven picks and we ended up landing Justin Fields. They also said all along that Aaron Rodgers would be traded last year. It was a huge story. They spent hundreds of hours talking about Aaron Rodgers trade. It never happened. I said, no, it's not going to happen. It's just dumb clickbait. Of course, Rodgers wasn't traded. 
The media and Schefter reported that the 49ers were going to take Mac Jones. I saw through it. I tweeted out the 49ers are going to take Trey Lance over Mac Jones and to remember this tweet. It happened. 90% of the things you hear before an NFL draft are just stories. Teams push them out. Teams don't want the league to know what players they are interested in. That's why you don't buy those reports. Bottom line is those national media guys are good for one thing. Breaking news stories. Other than that, it's all clickbait articles. These networks make money producing narratives, yet millions of fans just eat them right up without even questioning it. You have to realize if ESPN publishes an article and says the Jaguars or the Lions or the Falcons are the worst team in the NFL, nobody cares. None of the fans get mad. That means nobody retweets it or clicks on it or comments on it. But if they say it's the Bears, fans go wild. They get thousands of comments, retweets, and exposure. There are certain fan bases that they have to talk about certain ways in order to spin their narratives. Some of the narratives spun by these places, even the reporters saying the words know they are wrong, but it's what they get paid to do, and it works. Bottom line of the entire situation is just that it works, especially on Bear fans. I've made really good videos this offseason detailing what is actually going on in Hallis Hall and have grown quite a bit. But anytime someone posts a video calling us the worst team in the league or trashing us, I see it blow up and get tons of views and comments. They don't care if it's hate or not. All they care about is getting the interactions. That's why I created this channel, to bring you guys unbiased information without the narratives and false stories that the national media provides and that the lazy beat reporters run with. I do all my own research and watch tape, countless hours of tape. I appreciate every single person who watches these videos, even the haters. Keep watching. Hit that like button for me, and until next time, bear down. Up to the draft. I got so much hate mail because I like Mac Jones better. I was going to ask you, have you played receiver? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> He's y'all are laughing. He's the only one not laughing. Um, the, worst, the worst quarterback in that game wasn't Lance. It was it was Fields. They were both bad, but Fields was worse. Fields can't read. He can't read the progression. It's one look and go. And if he can make a play like a high school play where he scrambles out and throws the ball to Pettis across the field, God bless. There you go. Mm -hmm. But Bear Justin doesn't know what he ate. The offensive coordinator doesn't know what to fucking do. That's a problem.